This video lesson is the third video in a series of lectures on market failures and the different types of market failures that may arise due to the existence of externalities in the markets for particular goods and services. Today we'll be talking in particular about the example of positive externalities of consumption. We're going to look at a market for a particular good in which the benefits enjoyed by society from the consumption of that good exceed the benefits enjoyed by individual consumers of that good. Let's define positive externalities of consumption first, and then we'll look at a diagrammatic analysis of such a market failure. A positive externality of consumption exists whenever the consumption of a particular good or service creates benefits for society beyond those enjoyed by the individual consumer. In other words, if the marginal social benefit exceeds the marginal private benefit for a good, then we say that there is a positive externality of consumption. So let's look at our market on the left here and we'll first come up with an example of a good that fits this definition and then we'll illustrate what that market would look like incorporating our positive externality into the analysis. The market we're going to look at is actually the market for condoms. This may seem completely random but in fact condoms are a good that create many benefits for society as a whole that actually exceed the benefits enjoyed by the individuals using condoms. So let's look at our graph here and label the curves that currently exist. We're going to be discussing a consumption externality today. Therefore, the marginal private cost equals the marginal social cost. In other words, there are no external costs in the manufacturing or production of condoms. However, in the consumption or the use of condoms, there are external benefits. So let's label this demand curve as the marginal private benefit. This represents the welfare enjoyed by the consumers of condoms. In other words, the men who actually choose to use them. They benefit in several ways, but condoms also create what are called external benefits in their consumption, which exceed the private benefits. So we'll actually have a second demand curve on here, which represents society's benefits. So we'll label this marginal social benefit, or MSB. Now what makes condoms a market failure? When individual consumers, in other words the men who choose to, to use or not to use condoms, make this decision based only on their private benefit, there will be a quantity of condoms used equal to, as we see here, QE. So QE represents the private quantity of condoms that will be used when only the private benefits of men are considered. And the price paid will be PE. Now, what does the blue MSB curve tell us? It tells us that there are external benefits that exceed the private benefits enjoyed by the users of the condoms. So the distance between the MPB and the MSB represents the external benefits of condom use. Now, let's brainstorm what some of these benefits might be. Looking over here, we can consider the external benefits of condom use. So why does society as a whole benefit more than the consumers or the users of the condoms themselves? Of course, the private benefits of condom use are obvious. There is a reduced chance of sexually transmitted diseases. There is a reduced chance of unwanted pregnancies. These would be considered both private benefits and social benefits. But in addition to these private benefits, there is a lower population growth rate. So particularly for developing countries in which population growth tends to be a major problem, a lower population growth rate can be considered an external benefit of, co of condom use. There will also be lower HIV infection rates, which will lead to a healthier workforce. And of course, more productive workforce, which could even mean more economic growth, and if we take this line of logic a little further, we can say more tax revenues for the government. And since there will be healthier people in the economy, lower expenditures on public health. All right, so what we've just identified are some of the internal but also the external benefits of condom usage. Uh, we, we should see right away that some of these are going to be enjoyed by the users of condoms themselves, such as a reduced chance of sexually transmitted diseases and a lower chance of unwanted pregnancies. So the yellow highlighted benefits are considered by the private users of condoms themselves. However, these other benefits 
are more likely to be enjoyed only by society as a whole. A lower population growth rate, which might mean higher per capita incomes as well, lower HIV infection rates, which will mean a healthier workforce, more productive workforce, more economic growth, more tax revenues for the government, and lower expenditures on health from the government. All of these are external benefits which may not be realized by the private consumers of condoms themselves. Now, since private individuals will base their decision whether or not to use a condom on only their private benefits, the equilibrium level of condom usage will be only QE. However, once we take into account all of these external benefits, we should realize that society's demand for condoms exceeds the demand from private condom users. Therefore, there is a socially optimal quantity of condom use which exceeds the private free market quantity of condom use. So this distance here between QE and QSO represents the under allocation of resources towards condoms. Now what that means essentially is that not enough condoms will be demanded when demand is left entirely to the free market. The price at the intersection of MSB and MSC represents the socially optimal price because it corresponds with the social benefits of condom use. But the problem is that when individuals are left to their own accord to decide how many condoms to use, it makes no sense for them to consume at a quantity of QSO. At this quantity, the private benefit represented by this dotted line over from the MPB curve is lower than the private cost. Therefore, private individuals would not have an incentive to consume QSO condoms. This distance between PSO and PP represents the external benefits of condom usage. Now this raises a question. Is there any way a government or perhaps a non-government organization can intervene in the market for condoms to encourage and incentivize a greater use of condoms in order to realize these external benefits? Given our current situation, we can see that there is a potential welfare gain in the market for condoms. Given the current equilibrium quantity, only QE condoms will be consumed, but this corresponds with the marginal social benefit that is much greater than the marginal social cost, indicating that there is a loss of welfare equal to the yellow triangle here. Another way to think of this yellow triangle is the potential welfare gain. If demand for condoms could somehow be increased from MPB to MSB, the yellow triangle would be realized as an increase in welfare. So this triangle represents potential welfare gain. Now how can we get there? How can we enjoy this increase in total welfare in the market for condoms in society as a whole? One way to do this would be through positive advertising. Now in previous lessons we have talked about the use of taxes and subsidies to encourage or discourage the production of a good. In this case what we're going to talk about instead is the use of positive advertising to encourage the consumption of a good. Now I'm going to link to a video posted to my blog in this lesson. I'd like you to go watch this video. This video will show you an example of the use of positive advertising in India, a country with a relatively high birth rate and in which condom use is not at a socially optimal level. So positive advertising can be used to increase the MPB or the private demand for condoms. Raising awareness among the nation's people about the importance of condom use for their personal health but also for society's health can lead to an increase in the private demand for condoms, shifting the MPB curve out closer to the marginal social benefit curve. So an increase in the demand for condoms through positive advertising can help correct this market failure. If demand for condoms grows because of an awareness campaign or, or a commercial or a public service announcement that makes users more aware of the benefits to society and their own personal health, then demand will increase and the quantity of condoms used in society will increase closer to the socially optimal level. This market failure can be reduced or eliminated through positive advertising if such a campaign is successful at increasing demand. Of course, another option available is to subsidize condoms, which as we have seen in previous lessons, a subsidy is a determinant of supply. Therefore, a subsidy which shifts the supply curve outward can help us move along our marginal private benefit curve and increase the equilibrium quantity closer to the socially optimal level. So we could have a quantity with a subsidy here and a lower price for condoms. The decrease in price will incentivize more users to choose condoms rather than not 
using condoms. So what have we seen? We have seen two possible solutions to a positive externality of consumption. Positive advertising can be used to increase the demand and the marginal private benefit to condom users and subsidies can decrease the MPC or the marginal private cost, increasing supply, lowering the price and increasing the quantity demanded to the socially optimal level. There we have two solutions to a positive externality of consumption. Now let's just review quickly. A positive externality of consumption arises whenever there are spillover benefits or external benefits associated with the consumption of a particular good. Condoms are a great example of this because there are many benefits enjoyed by society as a whole that exceed the benefits enjoyed by the users of the condoms themselves. So using positive advertising and subsidies can help eliminate or reduce a market failure in the case of positive externalities of consumption.